Hi everyone and welcome back to The Village. If you're new here, we sit and talk about Africa, African culture, traditions, heritage, everything to do with the motherland. So if you'd like to join the family, please do consider subscribing. If you're already a villager, shout out to you. Thank you for the support. It's been absolutely amazing. Now, on to today's topic. Today we're going to be looking at why Africa, African architecture, especially mud houses, could be the future of Africa. Now, if you're in real estate, if you're an architect, or you're looking for new investment, this could be something that actually excites you. Um, and if you're also a cultural enthusiast like me, you know, and, uh, and you know you're an activist, especially in terms of uh, preserving African heritage and African culture, this is this is a topic I actually had so much fun putting together. Now, there is. There is no doubt that Africa's population is actually on the rise. Uh, there's been so many articles out there about 2100 being a very big uh, year for Africa because it's said that Africa's population, you know, will be the highest probably compared to all all other populations in other continents. So it's it's huge. So what this means is that more and more of us are going to be looking for you know an affordable decent place to build a family for us to stay for us to be able to be comfortable you know and it's increasingly getting more and more difficult in fact let me share some interesting data with you guys it is said that since 2007 half of the world's population has been living in cities and that this number is said to increase to 60 percent by the year 2030 i mean that is mind blowing and then because of this huge concentration of population in the city um it is said that this population is the one especially in the urban areas that contribute to 70 percent of the global carbon emission and over 60 percent of the resources are being utilized by these people in the urban areas that is crazy so essentially what this means is that we are concentrating all all our resources in the urban areas and all our population in the urban areas which has sort of led to this weird place where we have this mono monoculture kind of buildings looking all the same and <laughs> it's just it's taken away from so much of our culture so much of our creativity especially when you look at african architecture this just doesn't compare and also what this has done is that it has really driven the real estate prices um uh, prices high and they keep just skyrocketing now if you compare this and how we as africans used to build our homes um, it's pretty different look at this the truth is that these houses are really beautiful and absolutely exquisite and the design is very centered on african traditions african culture african heritage it's it's not this mono monocultural design that is a box that looks the same color same shape just you know like it's it's not boring like that and also it is inexpensive because a lot of the elements that go into building the actual house itself are natural elements things like mud things like poles things like thatched uh thatched roofing these these houses are in decent shape they are really really great you know and they've i love that they've incorporated the modern elements into building the houses now this honestly is way better and it does not compare even to the current living situations or conditions that we're currently experiencing in the city in the in the urban areas the conditions are just really really bad some of the houses are not even you cannot even call them houses look at this what would you call this not to mention you know the sewage and waste situation that we're living we're living in the midst of it's just created a hot mess now think about it what about the traffic the pollution the congestion in the city 
there is room for us to do much more now if you look at this and you say oh my god i don't even mention it uh this is just crazy think about it if you think it's crazy now how about in as the population grows and we're talking about 2100 when we'll, we'll be many more of us you know like let me give you some hard numbers when you look at the numbers especially on slum dwellers people living you know before below the poverty line uh it is say that um the proportion of the urban population living in slums worldwide declined uh especially between 2000 and 2014 and the number was from 28 percent and it went down all the way to 23 percent as you can see here but then what happened is that in 2018 a reverse of that started to happen now this number started to grow to and it went to 23.5 percent i'm pretty sure right now if you take the pandemic situation into account uh and how how long it will take for many countries to recover uh, especially from the pandemic and everything we are dealing with right right now this number has definitely gone up now i know many of you would be curious okay so where are some of these huge numbers you know coming from what areas if you look down here you notice that a lot of the areas that are being um fronted especially this is this data is from the un uh the areas are in asia and in africa we're talking about numbers from 370 million 238 million 227 million i mean these are huge figures it is said that by 2030 3 billion people will require adequate and affordable housing i was like dang if right now we cannot be we are not able to meet these requirements then how is it that in 2030 we'll be able to do this now and before anyone else comes here and starts to say oh no this is just an a third world can uh third world country problem uh, it's the problem of asia and africa to figure out no 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 this is not just happening in these areas but even areas where you'd call them first world countries like america there's a lot of homelessness and these people are living in shanties and they're living in areas that you'd actually call slums just the same way you'd call those slums in asia and africa slums let me just show you this video homeless encampments all over the place they're on the sides of the roads and dirt lots there's long stretches of them on sidewalks some are in tents some are in rvs some are actual encampments with makeshift structures where hundreds of people gather in communities. It's estimated there's about 5,000 homeless individuals throughout the city of Oakland, but nobody really knows the exact answer. And the number of people on the streets in Oakland's nearly doubled in the last two years alone. A lot of that has to do with the high cost of living in the Bay Area. Apartments that were once $1,000 a month now cost closer to $3,000 a month. This is a global problem and it is something that the current uh, quote-unquote real estate housing or real estate or housing markets is not able to fix because this idea of a western kind of civilization is just not sustainable it is not sustainable not only in the first world countries but you can see the problems that we are actually facing we as africans so let's see what the un is actually proposing as a solution or how do we go forward because obviously they have the uh the sdg goal 11 uh that focuses on sustainable cities and communities now it's said here that the growing number of slum dwellers is the result result of both urbanization and population growth now before you guys come and start to say oh people should stop having babies in africa we're not going to stop having babies first of all and we're not going to apologize for having babies because this is our culture this is our heritage this is who we are as a people now having kids is not the problem but what i'm seeing here is that the main problem is how are we using the current resources to serve the people that are there. Now I said here that adequate housing is a human right and the absence of it negatively affects urban equity and inclusion. 
health and safety and livelihood opportunities. Now, the UN goes on to propose that a renewed policy attention and increased investments are needed to ensure affordable and adequate housing for all by 2030. And I'm like, the moment I saw this part where they said increase, increased investments, and I was like, where are these investments coming from? And who is investing? First of all, you know, policy, I can, I can, I can, I can, I can relate to policy because policy, it's a matter of like changing a few things, how things are run and, and this and that. Well, if we're going to touch on policy, I personally would advocate that how about we look at policy or we change policy to include and promote African heritage, African heritage, especially um, in terms of housing and how we can integrate african heritage into the into the urban areas look at something like this this is definitely a clay building but you can see that it is, it is absolutely exquisite it is absolutely amazing and it doesn't cost as much as putting a cement box you know uh if you compare that and this and this has natural elements you know this is all pure clay that goes back to the earth i feel like we have a real opportunity for us to tap into um a unique area of our lives as africans especially in our um african architecture and really bring the best out of us so that we can be able to provide comfortable living for ourselves right now and even for the future. Let me show you a few examples of what I'm talking about. Look at these designs. Tell me this is not beautiful, guys. Yeah, this is Hausa architecture in the northern part of Nigeria. Yeah, there's so much beauty. Yeah, most of these houses are even built out of clay. Yeah, look at this. Pure clay architecture, natural elements. Tell me this is not beautiful. This doesn't cost as much as building, putting together a cement block, right? Look at that. Where did we go wrong as Africans? And I, when I was doing this research, I really tried to go to the internet to try and get um, African um architectures or uh, schools that are actually focusing predominantly on traditional african architecture you know what these days people want to call eco-friendly housing if you want to call it that call it that i really did try my best to actually go out of my way and look for these companies close to few existed uh, real estate companies that actually predominantly focus on traditional African architecture like this, it was almost next to impossible to get any farms. Now we've resulted to this thing where we are now, because of like the growing, growing uh, urbanization, growing population, many of the real estate companies now, they are going to people with indigenous land and they are trying to convince these people to sell their indigenous land so that they can start putting cement blocks there. And for me, I am saying that is not the way. Because if you bring these cement blocks to these areas, who is going to buy? Think about it. The person who is in the village cannot afford. And the people who are already in the cities who are living in slums cannot afford. So then who are we actually building these houses for? It's like we're shooting ourselves in the foot, literally displacing the people who are there indigenously, putting up cement blocks that they're not going to afford, then we're going to bring home. Come on, let's talk about it. There is room for us to make money. I understand the aspect of you wanting to make money, but we need to. This is this is what I keep talking about when I'm talking about conscious consumerism. Let's think about and conscious invest uh, 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 entrepreneurship. Think about it. There are many ways where we can build businesses, unique businesses that really are centered towards promoting our, our culture and really ensuring that we have a better living as a people. Anyway, I hope this actually inspires you. I'm going to leave you with a few uh, examples. I got one um, uh, a 3D model home of a village. 
it it was like a resort kind of a village but i thought it was pretty cool that this architecture farm actually put together an actual traditional home kind of a village and i thought that this could inspire you let me know what you think guys in the comment section it's always a pleasure having you listen um listening and i love your contributions uh, i hope you get inspired to go out there and do something great and really let's unleash the sleeping giant in us africans we have so much potential there's so much that we have not tapped into and i understand why we are still dealing with a lot of post colonial syndrome and uh, decolonizing the mind is not that easy because it calls for you actually changing your ideologies and how you view the world even I for once like if I was going to build a house I would never have thought of doing something like this but then my eyes are slowly opening up as I do more of this, this research as I as I educate re- uh, as I educate myself, as I learn and relearn and unlearn, it's really, really, absolutely amazing. And you guys, I think you should, you should try. It. If you're going to build a house, maybe you should try this. Build something for your community. You know, think, think, think beyond just you and your two kids. You know, think we are people who are centered on community. How can we be able to give back? You know, it's time we start trying to understand how can we do things differently, right? Anyway, guys, until next time, cheers.